Hi, so this is actually take three. I don't always get these right on the very first try. So let's talk about this policy briefing project and what that's all about. This is a very important project because it gives you a chance to dig deeper into an area that you're personally interested in, or hopefully you're interested in because you're the one that picks the topic. So let me do a screen share and I'll um, explain a couple of things that are available. So on the website now is this policy brief project info. It's in the important information tile and it's down at the bottom. And so we're gonna go over each of these three things um, currently. So the first place to start is the policy brief project selection. So let me jump over to that tab right here. And this is, this is going to explain the policy brief. So what is a policy brief? So imagine that you're in a corporation or you're in a government organization, um, something like that. And you need to share some information. So there's two types of policy briefs. One brief is you're advocating for a position for a certain point of view. And that's, that's valid, that's legitimate. But another kind is one that's for informational purposes so that somebody can read the briefing and then make up their own mind on the topic. That's the kind we're gonna do. Ours is informational, okay? And so the University of North Carolina, their writing center, um, gives a little explanation of this. And in short, it says, a policy brief presents a concise summary of information that can help the readers to understand and likely make decisions about government policies. And so technically we're not doing government policies, we're doing IT policies, but as you will see as we go through this, there's a lot of overlap there. Policy briefs may give objective summaries about relevant research, suggest possible policy options, or go even farther and argue for a particular course of action. So like I said, we're going to do the one for informational purposes. Now, how does this tie into the class? Like, what's the point of this whole thing? Our second student learning outcome, and these are listed in the syllabus in case you skipped over them, but our second SLO is to demonstrate knowledge of at least one significant ethical issue generated by information technology today. All right, so this is your chance to hit that SLO. We're going to do it twice, so you get two chances. It also gives you a chance to dive deeper into an ethical issue pertaining to specific domains where technology plays a role. And finally, and in my mind, the most important part of this is we're going to create a class knowledge base of issues that will almost serve as the textbook for the class as we go through the class. And I'll explain how that's going to work in just a minute. So in this document, there's a process that I highly recommend you go through. The first step is you have to choose your topic. And if you look at the list below, it's got all the topics laid out based on what our course schedule is going to look like. Step two, you review the outline. Read how to create a policy brief. We'll get to that in just a minute. That's a whole other document. That'll help you understand what's included in a policy brief, how to format it, what it might look like. Step three, and, th and this way, if you read that, then you have an idea of what information you need to go find. So step three, now you have to survey the information and select an issue. Let's take artificial intelligence, for example. Like there's so many different issues, okay? We don't want you to write about all of them, just pick one, so you, but you need to know what's out there. And so, for example, I, I just wrote down a short list of issues here. Malicious inputs to content filters. You've got a content filter to protect your kids. What if something that gets kind of subverted in some way? Abusive workplace behavior. Hacking medical implants. You have a pacemaker and something happens there. Blurred lines of copyright. What if one musician takes a music line um, and puts it into their song? You know, there's some copyright issues there. Cyber harassment. Defending the freedom of tweets. Are tweets considered protected speech? Digital downloading. I mean, the list is literally endless on all of these topics, okay? So where do you start? So I give you two tips. There's two places I recommend starting. The Victor Valley College Library has a really nice section that has a couple of databases, okay, um, that talk about pros and cons and controversial issues. 
So this might be a really good place to start. Opposing viewpoints and context is one of my favorites. CQ researcher is one of my favorite because you can go in and look for a topic like artificial intelligence or privacy or you know whatever. You might have to think of how to phrase it, but you can go in and look and it's gonna give you research on and pull articles and pull information on both sides, pros and cons. Um, they've got some books listed. They've got some other resources listed. So here's my t other tip. If you don't know how to use this, get library help. The librarians, they love helping students, even virtually. Like this is the thing, right? Ask a librarian, send in a question. Hey, you know, I'm looking for information about issues, ethical issues on this topic. Where should I start? Ask them a question. They will respond. I promise they'll respond. And there's some virtual um, assistance. I think they do like Zoom chats or anyhow, they've got an in-page widget that when it's working, um, they'll show you how to do it. Anyhow, so there's lots of good information here. All right. And let me think. They have research tools. So they've got this pro and con controversial issues. If you click on that, okay, that takes you back to that page somewhere. They've got a page on how to use this page. Anyhow, lots of good information there. So, so don't hesitate to make, take advantage of those resources. Another link that I give you is the University of Texas, Texas Macomb School of Business has a huge, huge ethics repository for lack of a better word. And when you click that link, it's gonna bring you to this page. Now, these are not all technology related, okay? But some of them are. So this might be a good place to scan and just see what kind of issues are there. And they've got lots of resources here. So you can look up, you know, media, arts and culture, organizational, professional ethics. They've kind of have it broken into different categories or you can just scan down. Here's a, here's a short list of all the videos that they have on these different topics. Really, really, really good resource. So I highly recommend that one. So once you kind of land on your topic, okay, you say, oh, this is super interesting. I want to know more about this. Then you're going to write up your policy paper using that format back in step two, using this how to create a policy brief format, okay? So you're going to write it up and respond to all the issues there. Now, we're only talking a two to three page thing. This is not a 15 page paper. As a matter of fact, if it's more than three pages, I probably won't take it. I re it's a brief. The idea is, is at a glance, what can you tell people? So you have to be concise. That's a balancing act. How do you include enough information to give all the details, but how do you be really concise so that people aren't bogged down in reading a 20 page thing? So respond and write it. And then step five, submit to the wiki. Now, there's a whole page, a whole video I created on how to use the wiki. And let's jump back over here for a minute. Issues in ethics policy briefs. Just to give you a look, this is what the wiki looks like. But again, here's a link to that video. There's a whole video for how to deal with this part of it. So I'm not going to go into too much detail here. Let's go back to this white paper. Now, so those are your five steps, okay? Choose your topic, review and outline, survey and select, respond and write, review and, sum and submit. So I'm giving you an option here because you're going to be able to see who else signed up for that topic. And there's a lot of value in connecting and coordinating ideas. Like we don't want five people to all write on the same exact aspect of artificial intelligence. That would be kind of boring. So. I'm going to actually, there's bonus points possibly available if you can demonstrate that you've collaborated with the other people that are in that topic area. And there's lots of ways to do that. So if, if you connect with the other people in your group and you guys decide to get together for in Zoom for an hour and do some research and crowdsourcing and brainstorming and kind of say, okay, well, I'll take that one and I'll take that one. Now, this is not required. You can 100% work on your own. But if you work with the other students and you can demonstrate that, um, I will, there are bonus points possibly available on this. So if you're going to do that, contact me ahead of time and we'll work out the details of how that might work. So if you have questions on this, post our help desk channel in Discord. 
This gives you a grade rubric, an overview of how I'm going to assess this. This is worth 50 points. So in a class where probably total, we might have 500 points, 450 to 500 points. This particular assignment, the two of them together is worth 100 of those points. So this is a pretty hefty chunk of change. Now, where do you sign up? Come down here. I created a little jump menu. Um, my daughter said, well, what if they just delete somebody's name? And I was like, well, that'd be ironic in an ethical class, a class on ethics to explain or to display unethical behavior by deleting somebody's name. So don't do that. Okay, I'll take that really seriously. If the topic's filled up, this is kind of a first come first serve. If the topic's filled up, then you got to move on to some other topic. Okay, so just go down the list, put your name by the topic, and we'll go from there. Now, the tricky part is, is this particular one, week one, you got to get that done this week. And this is designed to be done in a week. Okay, so in the week that you are doing, in the week that your paper applies to, so like in the, let's say we do the privacy one and it's due Sunday, then next week you're excused from doing the insight assignment because you just provided us with your insights on part of the topic in a much more expanded way. All right, so the week that your paper applies to, that's the week you're excused from having to do the insight topic. Hope that makes sense. All right, let's go back up here. So let's go to this policy brief. Let me go down here. How to create a policy brief. Briefly, let's talk about how to create a policy brief. So I did a lot of looking and there's a lot of resources and there's a lot of different ways to do this. I kind of pulled together from a few different things, the most concise way, I think. All right. And so most of this is from uh, the Food and Agriculture Organization, the FAO, which is a government body um, about how to create policy briefs. And so I put a link here. If you click the link, it'll pull up this nice PDF. It's actually nice. It, it's long, like you don't need to read the whole thing, but you can scan over it because it actually gives like examples and it talks about each of these sections I'm going to cover here in a minute. Um, let me jump down to this section here, how to structure it. And so, for example, here's some title examples. Okay, and for each of these sections, here's some examples of summaries. So, if you click the PDF link, super good resource if you want to actually visually see what some of this might look like. So, here's the purpose of a policy brief. It should provide enough background for the reader to understand the problem. It should convince the reader that the problem should be addressed urgently, like this is an issue we need to deal with. It should provide information about alternatives in an objective brief. So you might say, well, we can look at it this way, or we can look at it this way, or here's the pros, here's the cons, something like that. And it should be interesting enough to stimulate the reader to make a decision. I'm going to read this, and it's a fine line here because we're not trying to influence we just want to give them enough information to make their own decision, all right? So we're making an objective policy brief. So I'm not going to read through all of this because we're going to have questions this week in Zoom for sure on this, but you should read through all of this. This section, how it should be organized, you know, title, summary, all these parts. If you shortcut and you click the document outline, you can actually jump down to each of these sections. Love document outline in Google Drive. Anyhow, so it should have a title, it should have a summary, like an executive summary, um, some recommendations, you know, like here's some um, things to look at or things to think about, okay? And then the introduction, which is not the same as the summary. So make sure you read that carefully. The introduction, and it gives an idea of how to structure it. You know, what's the problem? What's the background? What are the causes of the current situation? What are the effects, like what's the effect of this? And then just information about how to structure the body of it. Um, what are the policy implications? And then what are your conclusions? And then also include a case study. So I put that at the end. And the case study isn't just like, here's the link, okay? The case study, you need to summarize it in your own words, but provide links to video or to a, to the resource where you learned about the case study. 
And then you have to have references and footnotes. So you should probably have at least four references. It says one to four sources. For full credit, I would actually expect it to be more along the lines of four sources. So it might be the, the uh, case study might be a source. Um, if you find some information in one of the library databases, if you find an article about um, maybe somebody breached this ethical issue and so it made the news, but they should all be from reliable um, documented sources. And again, this is just a link down to that same PDF. All right. So go back. Let's go back to here. I'm going to stop sharing. The main idea of this is to create a short paper that is very well structured. And I strongly recommend you do it in Google Docs for a couple of reasons. If you end up collaborating with people, you can share each other's link and give each other feedback. Um, but you can share it with me and I can give you feedback. But you can also easily link to it in the policy in the wiki. So in the wiki, as explained in the other video, you'll copy in the body of your paper. So we're going to make the wiki kind of a big, I don't know, ethical issue document. But you're going to link to your original paper. And so Google Drive makes that super easy to, um, to do without, having, without people having to download a file. So I'm really excited about this project. Um, there's only two of them that you have to do in the whole semester. You get to pick the topic. You get to pick the ethical issue. I'm hoping that you pick to collaborate with people because in my opinion, that's always more fun. Even if it's only to brainstorm, even if it's only to just get together for 30 minutes and say, okay, guys, what are your ideas and go from there. So we'll talk about this in Zoom this week, I'm sure.